don't forget when you work for somebody. You don't forget what you do for them. You don't forget what you talked about, you know, especially a hero like that. You know, it's like, oh my God, he was like such a hero to uh, so many people. This promoter said, hey, come early, you know, before sound check and everything. I was talking to Hendrix's manager and, and Jimmy wants to meet you. So I got there like, you know, 10.30 in the morning and uh, the band was, everybody was getting set up and stuff. And then uh, I went in the back room, Jimmy came in and said, Seymour, gave me a big hug. He says, how you doing? He says, uh, I wanted to meet you, you know, because I heard you're a guitar guy, you know, around town here in, in Cincinnati. And then he says, uh, come on, we're gonna uh, go up and do sound check. And uh, so he said, carry my guitar for me. So I had his white Strat, so I carried it up on stage for him, you know. And then the crowd was coming in, and I would hear, Seymour, all these guitar buddies that I knew in Cincinnati. Here I am carrying Jimi Hendrix's guitar up on stage, you know. So for me, that was like, well, really a thrill, you know. To uh, see him and talk to him, I mean, he really loved guitar. He, he loved working on guitars and messing with it and adjusting things. And we were adjusting uh, the intonation and all this stuff. He was showing me how to do things on his guitar, you know, how he would pluck the strings in the back and then hit the tremolo. We had a little Fender amplifier backstage there. He would show me how he would hit the back of the headstock and how he would like put a little bit of sandpaper on the fret to scratch it. And then as he would turn the volume control up, he would move the string over the fret. And for like Foxy Lady, you know, you hear that intro, that, that, that noise and stuff. And then how he was doing harmonics and, and how he would, um, uh, do the volume control and and he would use a piece of paper to notch between the two and four position for that You know that out of phase they call it out of phase, but they're actually in phase but parallel with each other, you know the pickups Jimi Hendrix had a right hand guitar And he strung it backwards so he put the low E string here on the treble side and the high E string on the bass side so when he would turn his guitar over, the bottom E string would be here, and the high E would be on this side over here. But it gives the high E string a little bit more um, output. It's a little bit fatter, it's not as bright sounding, and then you get a little bit more twang on the bottom E string because the, the angle of the pickup is closer to the bridge on the bass string. So now you got that distance here and you're gonna get a little bit more twang. So, when he would do, you know, Foxy Lady or any of these things, that was part of his real unique tone, you know, and the way he would play and his feedback and how he can control things and everything. And uh, it was fun. I mean, we enjoyed uh, talking about that and the angles and adjusting pickups. And, and he told me he would press the last string and raise the, the strings about maybe an eighth inch here, an eighth inch and a sixteenth inch here. So he would get that real fat bell tone when he would play the low E string, you know, like Wind Cries Mary and all this stuff, you know. So he had all this stuff in his case, which I thought was so cool, you know. He says, take whatever you want, you know. So I got a bunch of his strings and everything, and, and I still had the original tickets from the show. I said, Jimmy, I have something for you. I had two sets of uh, strap pickups that I hand wound on a record player, and I dipped in candle wax. Because when I unwound the pickups that were broken, they were like gouged and people take the covers off or mess with I don't know what happened, but I ended up with two sets of pickups. They were from a probably, you know, early 60s Strat. So I, I wound them and I wound them to the, the, the line where the wax was originally on the pickup. So I knew there was wax on it because when I took them apart, you could see the, the black candle wax that they would use and everything. And, uh, it had a lamp black in it to make it look black, and that's what Fender did, just so you would know that these things were wax spotted, I guess, you know. And uh, it would protect the wire when you put the cover on it. It would keep from snagging the, the bobbin and coil and everything. I took these apart, and uh, you know, I wound them. I took the wire off one turn at a time and counted it. And then my uncle worked for Texaco, uh, and he told me this is what kind of wire it is. It's, it's a form bar and it's 42 gauge form bar and it looked like a heavy insulation on it. So I got a couple pounds of it from Philadelphia because I was living in South Jersey at the time when uh, before I wound these things. I found an old record player. I don't know. I think I got it out of my mom's jukebox or something. 
And the machine went 16, uh, I think 33 and a third, 45 and 78. I had to hold the wire here and the spool was on the floor and I have to go up and down and I had to watch the traverse where I wouldn't go over top of the traverse or too low. And so I'm trying to hold this thing, hold the wire. I counted like 8,000 turns. I'm trying to let it go around. And I said, man, this ain't gonna make it. So I had John, I said, okay, we're gonna put it up 45. And then I took him with me when I ended up in Lima, Ohio. And then I took him down with me to Cincinnati. I had him in a toolbox and everything. So luckily I had these uh, sets of pickups that were wrapped in tissue paper. And then uh, when I went backstage and he said, Seymour, this is Roger. Roger's my tech on the road with me. And Roger Mayer was the guy who did the Octavia, the octave device and everything that I think Jeff used, but Jimmy definitely used it for some of his uh, tonal effects and everything. And I'm back there with my little Voigtlander camera taking photos, you know, and stuff. I had a little 35 millimeter and I think I had a two and a quarter with me too. So I took these cool pictures of Jimmy and I took a picture of Roger Mayer putting the strap pickups in Jimmy's guitar. Roger never had a pickup with Jimmy or working on his guitars. I couldn't believe it, you know? So he was like thrilled to get these photos from me years later. And so for me, that was really cool to be able to do that too, to get, get photos. Any of you guys ever met an artist that you were so honored to meet, for me it was, it was Jimi Hendrix.